Hey church family, thanks for joining us for today's Daily Connection video. Uh, we kick off this week talking about being connected to Christ's body, and, and obviously that body is the church, and we're going to be looking in 1 Peter, and Peter's writing a letter to the church, kind of giving them some warnings, giving them uh, some some values, some ideas to kind of live by and work by, and so we're going to be looking at, at one of those as, as Peter kind of talks about the end of time, and and that's always a really interesting topic amongst believers. Uh, I, th I think it's because it's something that we don't know everything about. We know bits and pieces scripture gives us some uh, what we do know is that in the end Christ wins uh, no matter what right and as as believers we win alongside and we get to share in that glory uh, but uh, we there's still tons of questions that we have and so I think a lot of people have a lot of interest about end time theology and, and what's going on there but what I want us to look at today is what I think uh, is something that gets missed in time at times in end times theology uh, we get so excited about what's going to happen we forget to, to look at how we should act how should we should be responding. So we're going to start today, 1 Peter chapter 4, looking in verse 7. It says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded for prayer. I think this verse gets taken out of context so often. So first of all, the, the first little phrase there, the end of all things is near. I think when we read that, our immediate thought is the world is coming to an end soon. And, and yes, it is the world as we know it, but it, it's going to come to an end uh, one day. But but as believers, we should not be looking at that as the end. We should be looking at that as the finish line. We have completed this part of life, right? As believers, whether that means we have gone on before the Christ has returned or, or we go on with Christ in his return, uh, the end is a finish line for us, having completed the race that exists during this time. And so we don't have to look at that and be like, oh, destruction, the world comes to an end. No, we can look at that with joy, knowing if we're believers that that race, that part is completed. And then he gives us two other, uh, he gives us two other commands here. One is, um, he says, uh, to be alert and the other to be sober-minded for prayer. And again, I think a lot of times we look at those in the context of the end is near. So be alert to the end and pray for the end. And I'm telling you, I, I don't think that that is what Peter's talking about. Our writer uh, here in, in, our in our devotion, he doesn't also think that that's what Peter's talking about. He, I agree with this guy. And that is that when he says be alert, he's saying, hey, be alert by, by not letting your emotions control your life. The world throws crazy stuff at us. And if we're not careful, we can allow all of that to affect how we live, how we function, the things that we do. We can uh, allow ourselves to just react to the world around us. And, and so Peter said, hey man, be alert to that. Be wise to that. Pay attention to what the world is throwing at you. And instead of having an emotional response to it, let's respond as believers who have a foundation and that foundation is on Christ. And then the second part, be sober-minded for prayer, goes right along with that. Instead of being controlled by the values and the thoughts and the ideas of the world, instead we should have be sober-minded. We should be controlled and, and pray and seek the, the will of Christ. We should be focused on Christ, not allowing those things to affect us, but instead uh, allowing Christ's values, allowing Christ's commands, living in, in prayerful dependence on Christ. We don't have to be excited or emotional about what's going on. Instead, as the world tosses crazy things out of us, we can look and say, hey man, my God is sovereign. He is in control. Nothing has happened that, that he doesn't already know about. So if he's in control and, and, and he's in charge of all things and all that's happening is, is because he's allowed it to happen, then, then I, don't, I can be sober-minded and I can prayerfully depend on him. You know, and I think right now, man, as, as we look at, at cancel culture, as we look at uh, just tons of stuff going on politically, uh, health-wise, just there's so much in our world today. Uh, and I think the church is, is coming to a time potentially where we could find some real pushback from culture around us. I, I think we could find ourselves in a position where we could be very easily overexcited about what's going on around us. And we could forget that God is in control, but he is in control. I, I think about uh, my, my kids, and specifically my oldest. Um, you know, there may be, be times where she's uh, taking a nap and, and when she wakes up, she goes to look for me. And, and maybe I'm outside, you know, doing a project out there. Maybe I'm in a room that she'd expect me to be in. And, and for a long time, when things like that would happen, she would just she would get so scared and she'd start crying and screaming, you know, daddy left me, daddy left me. And, and it took a long time for me to instill in her and help her understand that, hey, daddy's not left you, okay? Daddy is, daddy's here. He's never left you. 
He's always been here. Your daddy will, will, will never leave you. All right, I'm always going to be here for you. And it's taken time, but now she knows that. So she wakes up, she can't find me. She doesn't have to get scared or, or emotional or excited or, or nervous. She knows that even though she can't see me right now, even though I may not be where she expects me to be, I haven't left her. I'm still there, right? And I think that as humans, man, we, we can do the same thing. We can uh, look around us and, and see that it looks like the world is falling apart and and we get nervous and we get excited, we get emotional and, and make decisions we shouldn't make or, or whatever that may be. And it's a testing of our faith because God's saying, hey, look, I know that, that things look rough right now, but I've never left you. I never will leave you. I am in control. So we can be alert. We can be sober minded. We can prayerfully depend on Christ. So author gives us a couple of questions to look at. The first says, when are you tempted to think in ways that are more in line with the world than with the Bible? Uh, so when are, when are there times when you are more, uh, more apt to, to, to be tempted to look at things the way the world looks at them as opposed to the way Scripture looks at them? And then the, the second question is, how does it make you feel to know that the end is near? So again, uh, looking at the end is near as the finish line. I don't know about you, but for me, there, there certainly is a little bit of anxiety in that, hey man, wh what am I doing to be sure that all those around me know the truth of the gospel and, and know who Jesus Christ is and, and how, he has, how he has surrendered his life for, for us, gave his life for us? How many of them know that clearly, the, the people around me? But then also, there's some joyful anticipation for me, knowing that that one day uh, pain is going to be gone, sorrow is going to be gone. I'm going to be able to, to stand and bask in the glory of my creator uh, and, and, and see him for all of his amazing glory. That I, I look forward to that. There's joy that comes with that. But how, how, how do you respond to that? How does it make you feel knowing that the end is near? I hope that you'll take some time to really reflect on that. And as you do it, know that we love you and we're praying for you.